described as the bitterly fought knife edge referendum as the Britons decide whether to stay or leave the EU. We are joined in the studio by Asmita Pashotam. She is a researcher in the economic diplomacy program at the South African Institute of International Affairs. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Many people have been asking themselves, why are we seeing this referendum taking place? Well, I think there's a variety of reasons. Of course, the, um, there's a bolt up from the global economic recession a few years ago, and that's been hitting Europe very hard, and it's starting to recover, but not completely. There's a, a lot of anti-immigration sentiment as well, particularly with regards to the Syrian crisis that is ongoing, and there's a general s uh, sentiment that uh, Brussels has too much power over decision-making and politics uh, and that affects all of the countries. And UK has always been a bit of a Eurosceptic, but I think with the referendum, it's really given rise to a much more stronger sentiment of leaving the EU. Is this more of a tussle of the ruling party versus the opposition who are saying that, look, let's instigate the view of whether or not to stay and let's go for a vote? I don't think so. I think that when David Cameron initially had said that he would hold the referendum if he was voted again into uh, power, which ha did happen, and there were also calls from within his own party to hold the referendum because the UK joined the EU in 1973, um, and that was a very long time ago. So the, the global economic landscape has changed, the tra uh, trade relations have changed, the political landscape has changed, and I think there were calls for the UK to decide yet again if they should be part of this union or not. Mm -hmm. Looking at this referendum and its results, if they go either way, what will the impact be? Because most focus now has been on the negative effect it will have on the Britons and their economy. I think that this is really uncharted territory. Uh, no country has actually ever exited the EU before. So I think that the political ramifications, there will be political ramifications and economic ramifications for the EU in order for them to then uh, continue the trade relations with uh, with uh, the UK, the UK would then have to sign on to a whole bunch of different agreements in order to enter again. They have a two-year period within to renegotiate these agreements. And then broadly speaking, the EU has signed a number of free trade agreements with countries throughout the world. The UK will then have to renegotiate all of those agreements as a separate entity because it withdraws from the EU. Th th that is a point where people are saying Britain is a very powerful economy and they can go it alone. Well, it they are a powerful economy, that is true, but the negotiating of trade agreements has specifically always lain within the control of, the, of Brussels and the EU itself. And so maybe with the countries that are less powerful, the UK can still always secure a uh, strong deal. But with countries that are on par with it, it may not have the same bargaining power as it would have as being party to the EU. Let's now put ourselves in the shoes of a Briton and... Somebody who's watching is imagining if I was in Britain right now and being a citizen and having to cast my vote, if I vote yes, how does it affect me? If I say no, how do I benefit? Well, I think if you vote to remain, then business continues as usual. There are some, there will probably be some negotiations going forward, but we have to look to see what the UK can secure, what further concessions they would be able to secure. And if you vote to remain, well then, uh, to exit, sorry, then it's really anyone's guess, I think. Um, politically, of course, they would be able to gain more control over their own affairs, but we don't know the, uh, the ramifications that that can have globally, especially with the markets being so volatile as they are at the in moment. In the future of uh, David Cameron on this, how does it reflect on, on his legacy? That is a very interesting legacy. If they vote to exit, uh, it's it's a completely new it's a completely new avenue altogether. And Britain would be the first country to exit the EU. You must remember that there was also a lot of um, efforts that were made to even retain Greece. There were whole talks about a Brexit not so long ago, and now we're talking about a Brexit. So you know, I think if they can be, uh, if the UK does leave, there is a potential that they could cause similar sentiments to start up throughout Europe, and that will lead to a very interesting time ahead. Right. Thank you very much for your perspective on the matter. Thank you. All right. We're discussing the issue of Brexit. Should the Britons decide to leave or to stay in the euro bloc? Well, that's for them to decide. And we'll keep you apace with the developments when that story, if and when.